Richard, we're very grateful that you're here with us. In this fraternity of the burning heart. Amen. We greet those on live stream too. We're glad you're part of this growing fraternity. This fraternity, your heart burns while you're while you're hearing. Amen. This will be our 85th consideration of Genesis. We're in the second to the last, I think, meeting where we're we're showing the relevance of Genesis to the teaching of Jesus and the apostles. I'm planning to have one more on the appearances of the Lord in Genesis compared to the rest of history. It's just very central. Now, if you're familiar with the Gospels, the record of when Jesus went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. You'll know that there are a lot of references to people, single individuals and clusters of individuals that are mentioned in the book of Genesis. And there's teaching based on it. Now there's always been people throughout history that have viewed Genesis as a myth, but they were kind of oddballs, you know, they weren't many of them in the Christian community. But there are a lot of them in the modern Christian family in the scholarship section. Most common people don't have trouble with it, but the, the scholars, falsely so named. And then you'll notice you'll learn something else that in Christendom as a whole, there's not a lot of understanding about what's in Genesis. Yeah. It's, it's kind of uh, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And there's less, even less known about what's in the epistles, which are letters written to the churches, and I don't know, one out of 10 million, maybe? Yeah have a working knowledge of the epistles. It's, I mean, it's, it's telling you something. See, the, uh, Paul said in the last days, he said, men would not be able to endure sound doctrine. We're in those days. Doesn't mean nobody will be able to, but it means it'll be uncommon for people to insist. People sit in what we call the pews to insist that the Word of God is sounded from the pulpit. Yeah. No, no. Not many people like that. And consequently, there's a generation, we're now about in the fourth generation that's grown up that is scripturally illiterate in each progressive generation, there's people that know more about the Beatles than they do about Jesus. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, when we were one time in Ohio, come across a group of kids that knew more about Jackson than they did about Christ. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Youth in the church. It's the truth. I'm telling you the truth. So it's necessary to kind of shine this up that those that were inspired by God, they leaned on the book of Genesis, picked up things there. So what I'm going to do in this, I'm going to mention some of the key things in Genesis and how much is said about them in the, in the doctrine of Jesus and the apostles. So we'll start with creation. No evolutionist, not even the theistic evolutionist, mm -hmm. believes the record of creation. Mm -hmm. 
No creation, no evolutionist can tell you about the first man. The first marriage. The first birth. First death. They have no idea, and they'll even tell you they have no idea. So see, we, we believers, we don't need to bow to this kind of stuff because we got a record. We know about all this. We know who the first man was. We know where he was. We know what he did. We know what happened to the human race because he did. See, we know all this stuff. I think we ought to just play this up. Amen. Say, no, we don't want what you're selling. We already know all this. Too. We don't want your speculations about finding some woman in, Af in Africa, an old woman several hundred thousand years old, and she was the mother of the human race. And you'll say, well, who was the father? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that ended the discussion. Yeah. On creation, creation is brought up by Paul in Romans in his indictment of the human race for not knowing God. Not knowing God like a husband knows his wife. Not knowing God like you know someone, you're familiar with him, you know their manners, you know their ways. Romans 1.20 is where it's stated. For the end, he's, he's telling you that the, the world did not know God at large, the Gentiles, the non-Jews, that's all there was until Abraham was in. <laughs> That's the period of time he's talking about. The invisible things of him, of God, the invisible, you can study nature from now till the end of the world. Yes. And it's not going to talk back to you. Amen. Yep. You, got, you don't know anything about what the nature testifies unless you know what God said about it. Yes. But the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. It's like his thumbprints on creation, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. Godhead means divinity. So that they're without excuse. So you're living in God's world. It's like a great painting with a signature on it. Nobody in the history of the world, nobody picked up on this. Not one single human being in the history of the world knew anything about creation testifying clearly about God until God said something about it. Yes. Paul said this exact same thing in Hebrews. It's through faith we know that yeah. the worlds are framed. You have to be in God and you have to be a part of him to right. reveal um, how he has set everything in order. That's right. Mm -hmm. So the lack wasn't in the revelation. The lack was in man, human ability. Yeah, this is what sin did to humanity. This is what it did. Instantly. Mm -hmm. hmm? Did this immediately. That's right. Yeah. After Adam and Eve sinned. Uh -huh. Now you remove the account of creation, say, or say it's a myth... And this text makes no sense. Yep. Mm -hmm. That I just read to you. Makes no sense. Mm -hmm. We need the account of Genesis to account for the inexcusability of the human condition. Amen. Yep. The psychiatrist tries to explain it. Yeah. The sociologist tries to explain it. But it can't, a satisfactory explanation cannot be given. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, before you move off of this too far. Uh, this this matter uh, of evolutionistic philosophy, and it and it is it's got its roots that, that uh, reach into these other disciplines that you're talking about. Sociology. They all have they all have a common beginning that there was no God, and that everything is natural, although they can't explain it. These mm -hmm. things are intellectually dishonest. That's right. I mean, Amen. they're not—they're not even like neutral. They actually deny things that are evidence and refuse to see what can be seen. This is kind of what that text is talking about. That when they knew God, they 
they they did not glorify him as God, neither were thankful. Yeah. And they became vain. If you if you really know much about what they say, I mean it takes a lot of effort to set aside the actual evidence in front of you to follow after their fairy tales. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Mm. So man, man, you conclude from this, this is an implication of it, that man cannot live properly until he recognizes and embraces that this creation w was made by God, belongs to God, uh -huh. and God demands that he get the credit for it. Amen. Yeah. He will not overlook it. Not He will not overlook it being given to some credit to someone else. Mm -hmm. See, the Romans tell you that they did have a sense that there was God, but then they stopped their search and they made gods out of idols and four-footed beasts and things mm -hmm. just like man. See, they come short mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they didn't want to retain God in their knowledge. Mm -hmm. See, the more a person knows about God, if they're sinful, the further away they run from God. That's the truth. That's what sin did to the human race. So let's look at creation, how they, it's in reasoning. I know you know these things, but I want you to see how they relied, they were, they were relied on this record. Let's take, for instance, marriage. In the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. That's, Evolution doesn't say that. In fact, they don't start out with, they don't even start out with one or two. They start out with a bunch of amoeba. Something of that sort. Marriage. The fact that and need of marriage is traced back to this account in Genesis, that's the only way you know about how this was started. Humanity was not left without an explanation about marriage and what should take place in marriage. It was that it was a man and a woman. Don't see all the politicians, all this stuff, all this stuff about same gender marriage. It, it, it's more than just a political argument. Yeah, this thing is heaping up the wrath of God. Amen. That's what God poured out his wrath. In fact, book, book Romans tells you that sodomy called by, this is a psychological term, homosexual. That's, mm -hmm. It's not a scriptural yes. same, that's, that's, that's not a... Romans 1 teaches that that was the result of divine abandonment. Yes. Amen. That the reason that sin arose is because God left the house. Yes. That's what it tells you. He gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things that are not convenient. The next verse tells you, describes mm -hmm. sodomy, which is a contradiction of marriage, which is in... Um, in the scripture. Now if you talk about the pre-incarnate Christ, which we, we really don't know much about Christ before. We close this that then he was with God, was God, and he agreed to come to earth. Well you just don't know, you don't have many details about Jesus, but he, he, the reasoning about him starts with creation. So here's what it says about this is what you know about Christ, and it's in the book of Genesis. For by him were all things created, which are in heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, with the thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. See, that's, he takes you back to Genesis. Said Jesus did that before he was, quote, Jesus. Uh -huh. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created, he goes back to me, if you don't have Genesis created, what exactly is that? If you don't have Genesis, you don't have anything else that was like created like Genesis was. Amen. God has never created another 
flesh and blood person, mm -hmm. like he did Adam and Eve. Yes. He authors what's in the womb, I understand that, but it's an offspring, but Adam was not an offspring from another flesh and blood person. He was the offspring of God. It's in the creation. Without the Genesis account, the nature and reality of Jesus is not seen clearly. And there's a matter, this is creation. We're showing how creation was referenced by the teaching. When we talk about mortality or the steady progression or digression to death, we know that the whole creation, the, we say the universe, mm -hmm. groaneth and travaileth and pain together until now. The whole what creation? If you are to look at it from the perspective of food we eat, Paul teaches, forbidding to marry, talk about false teachers, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created. See, there he goes back again to, yeah. to Genesis. Where did food come from? Created. Without Genesis account of creation, we have no reasonable explanation for the various forms of vegetation and animal life being able to sustain human life. You, you, you can't explain that apart from Genesis. And then there's just the word, the creator, just, just this word. The non-Jewish society, the whole world, they worshiped and served the created, created, create creature more than the creator. So they're, so I'm pointing out here is that the word creator, has, if you rip Genesis out of the Bible, you cannot understand that word. The Creator. Let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him and well doing as to a faithful Creator. There it is. Uh, there it is again. Then we have there's a point of reasoning in Scripture that goes back to Genesis. Beginning, the beginning of creation, that phrase, the beginning of creation, the beginning of the world. See, it's traced back in Genesis. In those days shall there be affliction such as has not been since the beginning of the creation. Second Peter 3, 4. Some will say, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Then you have Matthew 24, 21, the words of our Lord. Then shall there be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world. Now we're going back to Genesis again. Acts 15, 18, known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. And one more to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which was from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God. So see... This is, this, is a, this is a pattern of godly thought. Yeah, amen. Godly thought doesn't commence prior to creation, with things prior to creation. It commences with creation. If we're talking about before Christ was enfleshed, that's, that's before the creation. See, the creation, that's the, that's the line of demarcation. Amen. That's where we've got to start there with our... With our reason, but if you take out Genesis, see, you don't have, you don't have a record of yes. creation. And there's a, there'll be other there's other texts that say that similar things. Yes, brother Jason. Yeah, a couple thoughts on this section on creation. It, you know, in the in the ancient world, the they worshipped many different gods. This was the, the idea that there was one god was a strange yeah. idea in the ancient world. And all of those gods were basically various aspects of creation. They, they worshiped the sun, moon, and stars, for That's example. Right. The Egyptians right. worshiped the Nile River. And so what, what the book of Genesis is really doing, it's saying, we worship the God that made what all of you worship. That's right. Amen. Amen. And so it's, it's really it's, yeah. it's teaching, it's teaching us from the very beginning of Scripture, there is one true God. And this is the God you must worship. The only other option you have is to worship some aspect of creation. Yes, right. And that's what Paul is saying in Romans. They worship the creation, the creation. rather 
uh, than uh, than the Creator. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This this also. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Go ahead, Brother Tony. Okay. Uh, creation, that, that's a much needed reference point, like you mm -hmm. said, because without it, so you can't really understand eternity. Yes, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Creation started time. Time started when it was created, yeah, when everything was right. created. So uh -huh. right. if we didn't have Genesis, we wouldn't know anything about time, and we wouldn't be able to reference yeah. eternity, and yeah. it would be just a mess. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. I was going to say to Brother Paul said what Brother Jason just said there in Romans 17 in Athens. God made the world. That's right. He's the Lord of heaven and earth. That's how he started his right. message there in the Areopolis. In yeah. Mars Hill. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. This matter of him being the creator uh, establishes his his right to say everything else in the book. That's yes. Amen. Amen. Because yeah. if he is the creator, not one of the creators, he is the creator of all things, yeah. and all things answer to him, proceed mm -hmm. from him. He has all authority, all power, all dominion. See, these are these are extrapolations from just that. Th in other words, put in work, he is God. Yes. Amen. Yeah, I have to follow up on that too. The, the, the world was created by the word of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the law is also the word of That's God. Right. So yeah. there's a, there is a def, there is a, a definite connection there. Amen. Yes. Amen. That this the God who made the world is the one who owns it, and and He owns you, and that means He has the right to tell you what Amen. to do. Right. Amen. 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 Like Sister June said, and you're, and you're held accountable to Him. Now when we talk about the whole issue of evolution. And science versus religion. The real issue behind all of that right. is is they is they reject the idea that there is a being who can tell you what to do. It's, right. it's not That's simply right. It's yes. not really an issue of science. Yes. They, they make it yes. out like it is, but uh -huh. the first great scientists yes. were all Christians. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you, you don't have to choose between science or religion. That's what they tell you, but it's, yeah. that's, not the, that's not the dichotomy. Mm -hmm. That's right. They are rejecting the idea of an ultimate authority. Amen. 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 Because if Amen. there's an ultimate Judge. authority, oh. we are not free to do what we want to do. It's that's a right. moral problem. That's that's right. Right. It's not a scientific right. issue, really. Uh -huh. See, what yeah. man conveniently got rid of the Genesis record by inventing evolution yeah. now you now sin doesn't appear sin anymore yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. and the sociologists they have a lot of trouble with the malconduct of humanity yeah. what is wrong yeah. This is what's wrong. You've taken away the concept, as Brother Jason said, of accountability. You've yeah. taken this away. Yeah. And when you do that, sin erupts like a volcano. Right. Yeah. Even sin itself must be revealed. <clears throat> That's right. The reality, the truth That's right. of it must Amen. be revealed. Man can't discover no. that. He's too sinful. Yeah, <laughs> you're absolutely He's right. from him. So you can see the importance. Now let's, let's advance on to Adam. There's a, quite a number of religious people that feel that Adam was not a real person. He was a myth. In fact, I had, at a wedding we attended, a highfalutin wedding, the one that had the ceremony referred to Adam, what was it he called him? Adam and Eve were an allegory. Allegory, an allegory. allegory. And I uh, took him to task in the wedding line. He didn't like it, but I didn't like what he said. So, but this is this is more common. See, when I was a young man, I couldn't imagine anybody would say something like this. I, but they are they are saying it. Question Adam. Now, Adam is the reason for the reign of death. Yeah. And that is sin is traced back to him too. But the but death is imposed. Death has been imposed on the human race. God has imposed it because of one thing that Adam did. 
Here's the teaching on it. You could not imagine saying this and you didn't know anything about Genesis. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Not sinning after the similitude or likeness of Adam's transgression. One former professor of a local Bible college said that that was referring to infants. Uh -huh. Well, it, that's not true. Yeah. What he's saying is Adam was condemned because he broke a commandment. Yeah. Everybody that lived from Adam to Moses did not sin because did not die because they broke a commandment. Yeah. There weren't any other commandments until until Moses. Yeah. So he imposed death. Yeah. Death. This is why people die. Yeah. Yeah. It's why infants die. Yeah. It's why children die. It's why old people die. Yeah. Everybody dies. Yeah. Because Adam sinned. Amen. God did, would not let the human race survive yeah, that's right. in that condition. Yes. Amen. Here it is again, Romans 5.15. Not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Uh -huh. For if through the offense of one many be dead. There he is. That's why death is there. Because Adam sinned, death was imposed uh -huh. on the human race. It was Adam's transgression that brought death. Yes. As 1 Corinthians 15, 22 says, For as in Adam all die. Yeah. Only the Word of God provides an ex explanation for the absolute reign of death. No one else, no one else mm -hmm. has any kind of explanation. Yes. We're the only ones that do are Bible believers. Mm -hmm. We must hold it out before people. Whether they want to hear it or not, they're not concerned about whether we want to hear their stuff or not. Hold it out to them. And Adam, Adam, he was also a figure of Christ. Romans 5.14 says he was a figure of him that was to come. That is, he was a federal head. He was a single person from whom everybody else sprang. See, all humanity is traced back to one person. And that's the same way it is in Christ. Christ is called the second Adam, the yeah. second man and the last Adam. Uh, yeah. And he's the head of a new mm -hmm. race. Yeah. Amen. And all of, all of who are in Christ are like him, mm -hmm. like everybody who came from Adam is like, yeah. are like him. Mm -hmm. You've got to know the book of Genesis Amen. to know this. Amen. And this, this incidentally is how the gospel is preached with this in mind. You address people you don't address people as drunks or sodomites or whatever. You address them as sinners that die. Yeah. Yeah. You got to start that where it starts. And then you have to work your way to Jesus who's the head of a new. Yeah. Amen. Head of a new race. Did I hear someone over here? Uh, it was just an observation. Um, going back just a little ways, um, you are telling the uh, story of... Uh, uh, how this uh, minister who was uh, preaching at, uh, who was ministering at a wedding uh, said it was an allegory of Adam and Eve. Well, if that's true, then Christ is also an allegory, and oh, yeah. sin never really happened. Yeah. But sin yeah. has happened, and this is where, as you said, where we trace debts, because yeah. Adam was a true man, and his yeah. sin was a true sin, and death, of course, is true death, and it just all traced back to Adam. Yeah. And therefore, we can all try to trace the yeah. resurrection of the body back to these the other, second These other things aren't just ideas. No. Right. Uh, they're realities. But they yeah. all trace back to, mm -hmm. to Adam. He's the uh, Jesus, not Jesus. Adam is a figure of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Adam is the first created person. Mm -hmm. Jesus was the first born from the dead. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. The new, the new race had to, someone had to come back from the death because mm -hmm. death is the end of yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. flesh and blood. Yeah. Amen. So somebody had to come back Amen. from that domain to yes. start the new Amen. race. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, it's appointed and a man wants to die. Yeah. And that hasn't changed until this That's realm right. and environment is gone and death is swallowed up. Uh -huh. That's right. Mm. 
See, life is superior to death. Yes. Yeah, amen. But amen. take Christ out and death is superior to life. Uh -huh. yeah. The uh -huh. human experience will never tell you that life is superior to death. They know that eventually mortal life has to succumb yes. mm -hmm. to death. Yeah. Death is like a conqueror. Yeah. But now life is going to swallow death up. Amen. Because of Christ's resurrection, mm -hmm. he came back from the domain of the dead. Yeah. Amen. So you can too. Yes. Yeah. Amen. See, we folk in Christ, we're resurrected people. Yeah. Uh, that still has a connection also. I mean, these things are building on one another. Yes, it's not right. like a, a segment, you know, like, okay, now here's the here's the place where we talk about creator, not that you're doing this, but in men's thinking. Now they have to build on that foundation to we're talking about God, the author of life, and that there is no life apart from connection to him, and, and that fits into the redemption and the new life that we live That's in right. Christ and That's being right. a new creature. Yeah. All of these things are being plugged in Amen. to what we're talking about see, here. You see how God, this is why the Bible is written the way it is. God, first of all, laid the foundation for thought. See, because redemption, salvation, is an economy of thought. People are what they are because of the way they think. Yeah, a, a, a brainless religion or a religion that specializes in what can't be understood is a contradiction. <laughs> it's a gigantic contradiction. Now, Adam is also called the first man. It is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, we say the last of Adam. The last Adam was made a quickening or life-giving Spirit. So Adam had to be given life, but Christ is the one who gives life. Yeah, amen. Yeah. That's it. See, if you don't have Genesis, yeah. you don't know this. It provides the details of the first man. No one confined to the sphere of human knowledge can identify the first man. Yeah. We can. We ought to like we've got bragging rights here. Says you, I, mean, I can't accept you. You don't have enough answers. I got the answers. Uh -huh. amen. Yeah. I can even tell you the name of the first man. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Through the offense of one, the scriptures teach, through the offense of one, judgment came upon all men under condemnation. Now, we've already seen that through Adam's transgression, death entered the world and was imposed. But now, now it's taught that sin is traced back. The propensity to sin yeah, yeah. is traced back to Adam. This is Romans 5.16. Not as it was by one that sinned, so was the free gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation. Yeah. He that believes not of the Son is condemned already. Yeah. Why is he condemned already? Because of what happened in Genesis. Amen. Therefore, as the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, Romans 5.18. Mm -hmm. Now, men are not responsible for Adam's sin, like the proponents of infant baptism. See, this, yeah. is, one of, this is one of their apostles. This is why they baptize infants. Yeah. They're trying to handle Adam's sin. But Adam's sin wasn't what was transferred to everybody after him. It was the propensities. It was his nature. That was His guilt wasn't transferred. His nature was transferred. Now, death is because of his guilt. But you don't sin because Adam sinned. You sin because Ad, you could not have any other nature but Adam's nature. He was the head of every person. Of one blood made he all nations of men. And who, what, the person we came from, we could not rise higher than the one we came from. Mm -hmm. Yes. Remember the passage in, uh, in Hebrews that, that reasons about Melchizedek. Yes. Yeah. It said that that Levi, 
was in the in the loins, was yeah. in the loin of his yeah. ancestor, and so that when this is how he reasons. That's right. This is kind of foreign to Western people, but he says that, so. Actually, Levi paid tithes mm -hmm. to Melchizedek because he was in the loins of Abraham. Of Abraham. That's, right. That's exactly how Paul's reasoning in That's Romans exactly five. It. We were in Adam. That's exactly when he it. sinned. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. He was the federal head mm -hmm. and official representative. Yeah, amen. As an Adam, all die. As an Adam, all condemned. Again, take Adam out of the picture. You have no answer for this. Again, it's written Romans 5.18. Just as the result of one trespass was condemnation, see? Can he condemn the whole race? It was more than Adam that was condemned in the garden. It was more than it was, the, it was everyone that came from him was condemned. Amen. It's not because this, you know, surely you know this, but I'm, I want to make this point again that the sin, the guilt of the sin wasn't transferred to was it transferred to, to the in infants? It was the nature. That's what I was talking about. So they hadn't sinned after the similitude right. of Adam's sin. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know that the race has been judged because, because of death. Amen. Every time someone dies, there should be a stern reminder all yeah. have sinned. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Even the righteous die. By the offense of Adam, death reigned. See? Romans 5.17 For by, if by one man's offense, death reigned by one. See? <laughs> by Adam, it reigned. I can only, now I've been deeply involved in the things of God from a young man. But I can count on one hand the number of preachers, and I made it a point all my life to listen to premier preachers. I don't have any time for airheads. I, I really don't. And I don't recall a person ever making a, a person of some reputation making this point that we die because of Adam. It isn't that people don't believe this. I think sometimes they assume that everybody knows this, yeah. but... Everyone doesn't see the reasoning here of this. You've got to get out of Adam if you're going to be saved. Amen. There's no hope for Adam. That's right. He's, that, well, that's why we got a second man. We got a second man because nothing can nothing constructive, so far as eternity is concerned, can come from Adam. Yes. He wrote that he's concluded all under sin, that he might have mercy upon all. And yeah. instead of just, <coughs> it, it really was a mercy from God that we all are associated mm -hmm. with and proceed from and take on the nature of Adam and have the condemnation of that nature so that the Lord can make us the redeemed. Yeah, he didn't just yeah. clean up the children of Adam and leave them on the earth for eternity. That's right. He, he had a better design for men. And so in concluding all under sin, he actually is extending a greater mercy and a greater blessing. Yeah. Amen. And that's yes. the entrance into that because of being able to take hold of the Savior. Now there's a, there's a common teaching among charismatic people. Mm -hmm. That God is restoring what Adam lost. Yeah, yeah. It's the common teaching. Uh -huh. And then they'll tell you, let's take back what the devil stole. And they got yeah. some oratory. The people all fired up about it. It's just a lot of gobbledygook. Yeah. Uh -huh. God's not restoring Adam at all. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Jesus is the last yes. uh -huh. Adam or the last of Adam. See? Yeah, right. yeah I've actually heard him talk about um, going back to having the way it was in the garden. Oh yes. But we're not going back there. We're going we what yep. God's doing is something better. That's right. That's a common teaching. That's unfortunate, but 
Yes. It's so wrong to address sinful behavior just from the perspective of the behavior. That's exactly right. Or as if it's just some kind of a learned behavior, they call it that. Yeah. But that's mm -hmm. that's how, or as if it's some kind of a physical physiological disorder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sin is traceable to that. That's that's why that's so wrong. Yes, and that's is. mainly how earthly wisdom addresses these things because oh, yes. they don't have this record of the beginning of sin uh -huh. to establish their thinking so that they Amen. think with that in mind. Uh -huh. Amen. This is a significant so again. Go ahead, Brother Justin. Well, it's, a, it's really important to see that because God, he, he won't use your old nature. Like you hear a lot of people say that he'll use your old nature to glorify himself, but the old nature, God, it's got to die. Yeah. But when you really see God's purpose in this, you see that there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth and a yes. new man. Amen. It's like all the old things are gone and here is to come in the new. Amen. Amen. The newness of life is critical. Yes. Amen. The person not a new creature, they're not in. That's right. No matter how nice they may seem. And, and this is the reasoning that buttresses that. Amen. Well, God said if anybody could follow, if they would follow the, all the commandments, then they would live. But there's not been anybody except for Jesus that no. was able to do that. And then yeah. Jesus, Jesus comes along. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he raises the bar. Uh -huh. Yes. Amen. He says, after you have done all that you've been commanded yes. to do, then say, uh -huh. you never heard anyone say, repeat this after me, like yeah. they say, you know? Say, we are unprofitable servants. Yeah. We've only done that which we ought to do. Yeah. So you get, if you do what you're supposed to do, yes. zero credit. That's right. Yeah. This is God's economy now. That's right. So, so whether let you can't do it, but let's just say you you could. Let's say you could. Let's cave into the hypothesis. You it was possible to keep all the command. Well, after you've kept them. It, you don't get any credit. Yeah. It's like zero credit. Like you still get F. Yes. Amen. The first man, the second man, that's the reason in Scripture. Adam was the first man was of the earth. First Corinthians 15, 47. The first man was of the earth, uh, we say from, of the earth. The second man is the Lord from heaven. <laughs> so it's a different, come, come from a different place. Amen. So Adam, you see how he's... Yes. He's built in a lot of reasoning. Let's take the, let's take Cain. Let's take Cain. Cain's sacrifice is compared to Abel's sacrifice. See, there's a, there's a, you get to see a contrast. Adam, you couldn't compare Adam with anybody, anybody else. Adam was just, was just just him. Now we got a we got, in Cain and Abel. We got a, a comparison. Yeah, I know about him. Cain. What he offered wasn't accepted, and he wasn't accepted. Uh -huh. Abel, what he offered was accepted, yeah. and he was accepted. Yeah. Uh -huh. Difference. Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. That's right. Although just by human reason you couldn't uh -huh. support that. He offered of the fruit of the ground, Cain did. See, well, that way you should offer a bloody sacrifice. Well, I, I think that's right, but the scriptures don't say that. That's right, yeah. It says that Abel offered a sacrifice by faith. That's right, amen. And Cain didn't. Yeah. Cain, Cain was a modern church member. Yeah. He just went to church because that's what you're supposed to do. Yes. Hmm? He didn't swear because it's just not proper uh -huh. social conduct. Mm -hmm. hmm? By faith, so there's a distinction. We need a, a distinction, and we're also—he's the first person that was categorically said to be Satan's child. Yes. Adam was the son of God. He's called that in Luke three. Uh -huh. Yes, the genealogy traits that it says, and Adam, which was the son of God. So, <laughs> but uh, Cain, mm. not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Yeah. What a statement. He was of that wicked one. Some versions read, who belonged to the evil one, uh -huh. who was from 
the evil one, a child of the evil one, who took the nature and got his motivation from the evil one. He was Satan's child. Now, there's only a few people that are called Satan's children in Scripture. All sinners are not called Satan's children. They're told that Satan worked in them, but they're not called Satan's children. Terrorists are called the children of the wicked one. Judas was the children of the wicked one. Okay? So there are people who is debatable whether or not they're people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Children of the wicked one, interspersed among the others. In tares, he didn't say, now you wheat nestle up to those tares and maybe they'll turn into a stalk of wheat. They were tares, period. That was the end of the story. Amen. All of them were, they were destined to be burned. Yeah. See, we learned, we have to go back to Genesis to learn that yes, Satan has offspring too. That's right. He's got false apostles. Uh -huh. yeah. yes. He's got false teachers. Some of his demons concoct doctrines and sell them to men for them to yeah. uh -huh. have men teach them. That's right. Satan's called an angel of See how you take Genesis away and none of this, none of this makes sense. And the scriptures speak of the way of Cain. Remember that was Jude said some of those teachers there, they follow the way of Cain. Rebellion, unbelief, feigned sacrifice. All depends on Genesis. Now let's move along here to Sodom and Gomorrah. It's a point of reason. This was this was an epoch that God does not want men to forget. Amen. Jesus had told the apostles the woe that would come upon those who didn't receive what they said. This is the first time he sent the apostles out before what men call the Great Commission. When he sent the apostles out, here's what he said to them. He said, Whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Amen. If you think for one moment that the people in the fair city of Joplin who have rejected the word of God and finally forgot the great tornado and are going about doing their own will. Yeah. If you think that's going to be overlooked, mm -hmm. they are worse Amen. than Sodom and Gomorrah. Because yes. they've sinned against some more. See, Sodom and Gomorrah, they, did, they had one man for an example. That's why Lot was there. Some people, Lot's got a bad, got a bad rap, you know. As though he chose Sodom because he wanted to live in the city. Excuse the vulgarity, but they're a bunch of dummies. The scripture says he chose that area because it was nourishing for his flocks. He didn't choose that area because of the city. He chose it because of the fields. And he lived in the city. And it vexed his righteous soul every day that he, did, that he was there. Sodom and Gomorrah, see? Can you imagine that? Let's just say it's you. You have a word from the Lord, the gospel, and you share that as best you can with somebody. And they say, oh, get out of here. We don't want to hear that. It's going to be better on the day of judgment. It's going to, God's going to be more lenient with Sodom and Gomorrah than with those people, Amen. even if they're your children. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh, see, it's got to go back here to Genesis and know, and know about this. Capernaum, Jesus had a residence in Capernaum, and he did a lot of, they were, Capernaum was one of the cities where he did most of his mighty works. Here's what he said to Capernaum. He said, Oh, and now Capernaum, which art exalted into heaven and shall be brought down to hell, for if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained. Yes. It would have remained right, yeah. unto this day. 
And we're not talking about a decade or two. We're talking about thousands of years. It would have remained. I can tell you this. If the work God has done in Joplin, as small as it may appear, if that work had been done in Sodom, God wouldn't have destroyed it. Yeah. Amen. So I'll tell you, the book of Genesis is teaching you how bad sin is. Now, the, the, the Sodom and Gomorrah are likened to Christ appearing a second time. Brought up, it says the same day that Lot went out of Sodom and rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. There, there you are. He takes you back to Genesis. Yeah. He also tells you that they're an example of what's going to happen to people that live ungodly. Mm -hmm. Now we get down into some personal stuff here, but here's what it says. He turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that would after live ungodly. Yeah. See, in order to tell ungodly people that. Yeah. Just, just to tell it. You say, well, I might get mad. So what? If you don't fear the wrath of man, tell them. Yeah. Ungodly people need to be told the outcome of their conduct. Amen. You've got Sodom and Gomorrah as an example mm -hmm. of people that live in ungodly. That's what it says. That's what's going to happen to them. Sodom and Gomorrah are examples of those who give themselves over to fornication. Some people say, well, Sodom and Gomorrah, it really wasn't homosexuality. That's not, that's not what it was. And they haul out one of the prophets that referred to their selfishness and not helping the poor and so forth. But these people don't realize that those not doing those things is what led them. In the Sodom. Those weren't the primary sins. Those were the original mm -hmm. departure from God. And just, just in case people wonder, was it really sodomy? <laughs> Here's what the scriptures say about it. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them were in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. Yeah. See, so he tells you it was a, it was a sexual sin. Give themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, men after men, women after women. So he tells, he tells you what it is, so you don't have to have anybody to speculate about what the sin of Sodom was. He spells it out. Other versions read this way, sexual immorality, sexual gross immorality, sexual immorality and perversion and so forth. Everybody who works with language, they know what that is text is saying. And Sodom wasn't overthrown because they didn't feed the poor. Mm -hmm. But there are but Sodomites say they were. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was a corrupt John prophesied of a corrupt spiritual city. In type it was it was Jerusalem who had fallen away, but this corrupt city, he likened it to Sodom. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's in Revelation 11, 8, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city which spiritually is called Sodom. Boy, now you got to go back to Genesis to see what kind of a description that is. Sodom. So again we see the importance of the book. Let's move along to Noah and the flood. The actual events are recorded in Genesis. The actual events uh -huh. When the flood came, the duration of the flood, what happened in the flood, you know, all that's... Jesus makes a point of this, that this is also like the coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Second time. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Same thing is repeated in Luke 17, 26 and 27. So when Jesus appears a second time, there's a sense in which people will just be going about life in a normal way, marrying, giving, marrying, giving to marriage, thinking like we're going to be here a long time. 
would be the same way. Living in total unawareness. Those of faith can read signs. They want something's around the corner. Mm -hmm. Something's around the corner. Come on, be so pessimistic now. Come on. We can do it. We're the greatest country in the world. Huh? We got this ballistics missiles, and then we got protection against them. And don't. But we can sense uh, yeah. something's around the corner here. But for other people, they're just living. They're living as though nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as people in Japan heard a tornado was coming, hey, they stopped living the way they were. Yeah. Yeah. Instantly. Uh -huh. We're talking about it in a matter of minutes. Yeah. They changed where they were. They changed how they were. They, they weren't the same. Yeah. And the moment a soul wakes up mm -hmm. to the fact that Jesus is coming again, yeah. they can significantly alter the way they live. Yeah. And if they don't alter the way they live, we know why. By faith, we read that Noah built an ark by faith, a 120-year project. Yeah. The Bible doesn't say he had a lot of help. Mm -hmm. yeah. People say he did. Maybe some of the other people helped, hired labor. It doesn't say that. That's right. As far as the record goes, it sounds just like Noah and his boys did the work. Mm -hmm. See, that's a, that's a big, big ark, you know. Two or three football fields in length. I mean, mm -hmm. and it, and it, Noah started it when he was 500 years old. Yeah. But then there's there's the God factor, mm -hmm. yeah. which, which alters everything. Yeah. With God in mm -hmm. the factor, nothing's impossible. Yes. By faith, Noah built an ark to the saving of his house. Noah's family wouldn't have been saved if he didn't build that ark. Amen. And here was a case where he, he couldn't say like Paul did, grab a board and take float to shore. I mean, he couldn't say, He had to be inside that ark. That's right. You do too. Amen. You have to be in this ark. Yes. The ark of safety. Christ is like the ark Amen. of safety. You've got to be in Christ. If, you don't, if you're not sure that you, whether or not you are, you better be making sure. Yes. That'd be making sure. Noah was saved by water. Mm -hmm. And it's compared to baptism, of all things Peter does. Yeah. It says, which sometime were disobedient. Mm -hmm. These are souls that were Jesus preached to. Mm -hmm. Which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing. We're in few, few, few. We're in few. We're in a few. That is, eight souls were saved by water. The like figure we're into baptism doth also now save us. Amen. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by, by, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, this is one of those texts that some people would prefer wasn't in Scripture. But the Holy Spirit states this was a figure. The like figure. So it was a figure, a type. The water was a figure. Mm -hmm. A baptism. Mm -hmm. For Noah, the water was the point where the wicked were washed away. Yes. For us, baptism is the point where sin is washed away. Yeah. See, so. Yeah. Peter's words, not the putting away the filth of the flesh. I hardly know anybody that knows what that means. Boy, they, let me give you uh, some of the other versions. That'll, that'll, that'll speak for itself. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. That's the phrase we're looking at. All right, here's the New American Standard. Not the removal of the dirt of the flesh. Here's the NIV, the New Revised Standard Version, the International Standard Version. Not the removal of dirt from the body. Basic Bible English, not by washing clean flesh. Century Bible, not because it removes dirt from your body. Net Bible, not the washing off of physical dirt. New Living Translation, not by moving, removing dirt from your body. Living Bible, not because our bodies are washed clean by water. Weymouth Translation, not getting rid of the dirt. 
not the washing off of material defilement. Williams, I do not mean the mere removal of physical stains. I won't read the rest, but see, this, this is not what it means. These translations are wrong. Amen. Seriously wrong. The word used here for flesh is not body. See, yeah. wash of the body. Yeah. The word for body is soma. This is sarx. It's not, uh -huh. he's not talking about the body. Yeah. That's not what he's talking about. Peter's not comparing baptism to an act of taking a bath. Uh -huh. yes. That's not what he's doing. Peter's referring to the washings that were under the law, which consisted of diverse washings. Now I give you some text. They had a lot of washings. They had to wa physically wash, but it was a ceremony. It was just a, it was a ceremony. It didn't uh, make anyone clean. Referring to them, the book of Hebrews says, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both, si that's the, the law and the tabernacle, which were a figure for that time then present in which there were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertained to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings. That's, no, that's the kind of washings mm -hmm. he's talking about. These washings were with water. I'll give you some text for there mentioned. What Peter is saying is baptism is not a ceremony. Yeah, amen. But I came from a background where it was taught uh -huh. as a ceremony. Yeah. Is that not right? Yeah. Amen. It's not just a ceremony. Yeah. There's, some, there's a cleansing that takes place yeah. in baptism, just like there was a cleansing that took place in the water That's right. in Noah's day. You see then how the record of Genoa assists us in understanding baptism. Yes. Amen. How's that? Just as surely as God called for the, and the earth was destroyed by water once, but it's going to be destroyed the next time by fires. He has already been baptized with water. <laughs> the second time is going to be baptized with fire. And then the filth's going to be completely gone. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, Noah, the world Noah was in before, it was called the old world. Uh -huh. The old. Uh -huh. That's right. It was another world. Uh -huh. It was in appearance. Uh -huh. The old world. He said he, God spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person. Peter says, teaches us that the old world foreshadowed the destruction of the present evil world. He adds, but the heavens and earth, which are now by the same word, that's the same word that brought the flood, yeah. are preserved under fire against the day of judgment. So just as surely as God called for water in the flood, uh -huh. He's going to call for fire yes. at the coming of the Lord. The fire will not be regional like it was in Sodom and Gomorrah. That was a regional fire. This is going to be a heaven and earth is going to pass away. But take the book of Genesis away, see? Yeah. You don't understand that. Our Lord will be revealed in fire. That's right. In <laughs> uh -huh. Just in the clouds. But That's how Noah, Noah was revealed in fire, in yeah. water. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Now let's, let's look briefly at Abraham. I'm going to have to rush along here. Matthew 22, 32. Jesus quotes this in justifying the fact that God is the God of the living. Mm -hmm. I am the God of Abraham. Yeah. Now, wait. What do you mean when he said that? That expression is used 15 times in Scripture. The God of Abraham. Yeah. That's it. No Muslim can say that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not this Abraham, because this is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they have Abraham and Ishmael. See, so it's just different. The idea of Abraham provides a kind of index to God's character and manners. His associations with Abraham, in his association with Abraham, the living God exhibited his ways that nobody would have known uh, about uh, otherwise. Those in Christ are called sons and daughters. People of faith are called sons and daughters of Abraham. Referring to Zacchaeus, Jesus said, 
He also is a son of Abraham. Yeah, uh -huh. hmm. Referring to the woman that was bent over, you remember with the Lord healed her, he said she was a daughter of Abraham. Yeah. And people in Christ are called children of Abraham. Yeah. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children mm -hmm. of Abraham. Yeah. Because of their faith. So if your faith differs from Abraham, you're not a child. Yeah. You're not. That's just the way it is. You can be, but you're not. No. Not unless you have faith like Abraham had. Mm -hmm. If you balk at what Jesus tells you to do, mm. don't be telling us you believe in God. Because yeah. you don't. Amen. That's, what the, that's what the weakness is, see? Abraham embraced the word of God and obeyed. He never questioned it. Even though some of the movies depict him questioning it. He didn't. The faith of Abraham was not something confined to him. He was apparently the first person to have yeah. extensively commented on that he had that kind of faith. Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. Yeah. See, so is that... I think a lot of Christians don't really know the kind of faith Abraham had. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. So it's good to familiarize yourself with it because we're called 2 Peter 1.1 1, 1, because of our faith we're called children of Abraham, Galatians 3.7. See, so that parallels everybody coming from Adam, yeah. uh -huh. everybody coming from Jesus by nature, but in faith everybody traced back to Abraham, see. Mm -hmm. Yes. In Romans 4 and in Galatians 3 is that we're justified the same way Abraham was justified. Amen. Abraham believed the promise of God or the word of God. We believe the word of God in the gospel of Christ and we're justified the same same thing. The same way. Amen. That's the faith of Abraham. Yeah. Amen. Any faith that is of a differing order, differing order is spurious. It's not real. Amen. Amen. The person not justified either. You're not justified by any other kind of faith. Yeah. Repeat after me, faith, that's not justifying that's faith. Right. Amen. Meeting this group with all of the other drunks and pretty soon you can work it all out. That's not the faith of Abraham. Yeah. That's not it. We must be related, our faith must be related to Abraham so we can recognize it. Yeah. See, we're not talking here just about like legal matters. Uh -huh. God wants you to know that what you have is real. Amen. So he gives you a flesh and blood historical person. Uh -huh. He tells you the things he did that he wants you to know. Uh -huh. That he was, he was told that something was going to happen that was physically impossible. Uh -huh. Yet he believed it. Yeah. He was told to offer his son up, which is very difficult, but he didn't. Yes. Yeah. So, so if you have this kind of faith... That's the real, that's the real faith. That's the real faith. If you don't have this kind of faith, it's not real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brother Justin. Well, actually, you'll kind of enjoy when you enter into trials. And that's right. Mm -hmm. That's Amen. right. Changes the way you look at life, doesn't it? So Abraham is an example of faith. Against hope, he believed in hope. That is... Again, so it means there was no earthly reason for hoping that what God said would come to pass. But he hoped anyway. But instead of hoping in the possibility, he hoped in the God. Amen. And against hope, he believed in hope. He considered not his own body. See, God told him when he was, he finally found out when he was 99 years old, he was going to have the promised child through Sarah. And the scripture says, he didn't consider his own body. Okay. Now dead, or impotent in other words. Or yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't say, no. Nah. See, at first, it is true at first, he said, how can this be? But this was at the first, remember, God doesn't evaluate faith till the test is over. Amen. That's right. So yes, at the beginning, but it didn't last, it lasted just a few minutes, so it didn't last long. Then he was convinced, he persuaded. 
with men, the longer they think on something, the more skeptical they become. Mm -hmm. But with Abraham, he he saw, I'm not, doesn't make any difference whether I'm able to have children or not. If God said, I'm going to have a son through Sarah, it doesn't make any difference whether I'm incapable or Sarah's incapable. This is God that said this. So if God says, be holy as I am holy, it doesn't make any difference whether you think you can or not. This is God that said that. This is God. Do what he said and he'll funnel moment by moment. Yep. You'll get grace when you need it. You want to see, grace doesn't come to you in escrow. Mm -hmm. You don't get like a, a month of grace at a time. Mm -hmm. You get it in the time of need. Amen. For that need. Amen. And if you believe that, you, you, can, you can live in the light of that. Mm -hmm. He considered not his own body. So the validity of your faith can be measured by your response to the promises. That's how Abraham's faith was evaluated by his response to what God promised. Let your conversations be without covetousness. Be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Right? When you don't have enough, how much does it bother you? Well, we, most of us have been there. We know about that. Don't know where the next dollar is coming from. How much does it bother you? Is not, therefore judge nothing before the time till the Lord come, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and make manifest the counsels of the heart. So you're trying to figure out somebody and you can't figure them out and you just keep working at work. Why don't you just, being that you can't tell, why don't you just wait till God reveals it? Yeah. Therefore, wherefore come out from among them, be ye separate, saith the Lord, touch not the unclean thing, and I, I'll, I'll receive you, I'll receive you. So, all right. So it's hard to separate from people. It's hard to do it. How much do you believe that promise? Yeah, amen. Come out from among them. Don't touch the unclean thing. I'll receive you. I'll receive you. Amen. Abraham believed God. See, mm -hmm. submit yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yes, brother Justin. It's worth not touching the unclean thing just to be received by God. Mm -hmm. it's, it's worth it. Amen. 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 Yeah. amen. You know, when you read things like this, resist the devil, he'll flee from you. You don't say, boy, I, I sure hope that, sure hope that's happened. Or how do I resist the devil? Here's how. So I can give you one word. This is very simple. Here's how you resist the devil. No. Yeah. Amen. That's it. That's the tempt on the truth. Yeah. That's how you deny on God. No. Mm -hmm. When you say no, the armies of heaven stand around you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Satan can see them. Now unto him that's able to keep you from falling. Able to keep you from falling? Do you believe that? Are you a person that worries about falling? Why don't you spend your time believing? This is true. See, Abraham believed these kind of, these kind of statements. He believed them. He staggered not through unbelief. See, unbelief makes you like a drunk man. <laughs> Once you get in the grip of unbelief, it's what if and how can, is it possible? I don't know. Looks like it's pretty bad. He didn't consider his own body and he was strong. He did strong and he didn't stagger. Didn't stagger. I admit that when he first heard the word, it might have hit him pretty hard, but he didn't fall down. Yes. <laughs> And he accounted God was able. Mm -hmm. yes. Let's see. Some people that see what God can do, they'll say, you got, you got what it takes, it's in you. You got what it takes. It's in you, you got to believe that. God, God gave you what it takes. And he, but Abraham, he didn't have what it took and he knew it. Yes. And so what he did, what he, did he, he believed God. Yeah, amen. See, <laughs> So don't, don't assume you've got what it takes. Yeah. Believe God. Amen. That if God says to do something, it is to positively doable. 
Abraham believed God was counted to him for righteousness. Well, there's much more I could say. I want to move on to Isaac, the child of promise. How that there's read, I remember there's reasoning based on Genesis. Isaac, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Well, there were billions of people that had been born and lived at the time, and Abraham had eight eight sons. Ishmael, Isaac, six sons by Keturah. But they weren't the none of them were Isaac was the only one the promise was going to come through Isaac. In Isaac. And then the apostles make a point. They make a point of this. Neither because reason on the remnant of God's people, he says, neither because they are seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac. Shall I see it be called? So see, there's Abraham, then there's Isaac, and then that didn't include Esau, and then it was it didn't include Ishmael, and then there's Jacob. That yes. didn't include Esau. Child of promise. So God God is focused in salvation. He's focused. Mm -hmm. You've Amen. got to believe that. Yes. That he's just not saving a bunch of people. Uh -huh. yes. In the end it is going to be a lot. But he's saving them one by one, so to speak, as like like births. Each of them are individual births, all of them. And it says that we're children of promise like, like Isaac was. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. We were born, we're not children of promise because we were born again. We were born again because we were children of promise. So you got to you got to see the reasoning. You got to see the reasoning. It's a it's a promise, not an act. Can you see the difference there? We're children of promise. So when you read what God promised He's going to do among people, the kind of people He was going to produce, and you see that in you, I'm I'm a child of promise. Yeah, you can see look, look. looking back, the children of promise can make the connection that God has crafted all of these instances in, in history yes, right. in order that we might yes, understand yes, right. that we it. are these children of promise. You got it. Yeah. That's how Genesis comes in, mm -hmm. see? It's, it's like a glossary. Yeah, that's right. It's like a glossary. And he was Isaac. He was different from Ishmael. They probably physically probably looked a lot alike. If you just if you just looked at it, they probably looked a lot alike. But they, he was different. Cast out the bondwoman and her son. He, Ishmael's not going to be here. Yes, yeah. but Jason. Yeah. Just the difference between Ishmael and Isaac is that Ishmael was born the natural way. Yeah. In other words, he was. Remember, uh, Abraham and Sarah they hatched that little plan. Yeah. You know, but Isaac was born according to promise. promise. In other words, God did it. That's right. There wasn't any other explanation for Isaac's birth yes. other <laughs> than the work of God. Amen. And then, that's that's what salvation is. Salvation, Amen. Salvation is the Amen. work of God. It's, it's not. You can't do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Notice uh, the blessing of Jacob and Esau is mentioned. In Hebrews, by faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Mm -hmm. He blessed Jacob and Esau uh -huh. uh, for things to come. For Jacob, here's what he promised Jacob. God would give him the dew of heaven, the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. People would serve him, nations would bow down before him. He would be Lord over his brethren and his mother's sons. Everyone who cursed him would be themselves be cursed. Everyone who blessed him themselves would be blessed. Mm -hmm. And here's what he said about Esau. His dwelling would be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven above. Esau would live by the sword. He would serve his brother Jacob. The time would come when he would have dominion and would break the yoke of servitude to Jacob. Mm -hmm. By faith, this wasn't Jacob's diagnosis of his sons. Mm -hmm. This was a prophecy yes, amen. by faith. So if you don't know this is in Scripture, you don't know mm -hmm. about these kind of sayings, these kind of statements. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. 
Throughout history, there have been people who have made these kind of statements. They've told what's going to happen, and it came to pass. History is filled with, scriptural history is filled with examples of this. So Jacob and Esau. Then there's Hagar and Sarah. Hagar is Sarah's handmaid. Now it was ordained relationship. See, all these relationships were ordained to be the means to which God would teach us some facet of his salvation. We've got to see how this how this fits together. Now, Sarah, she's a depiction of spiritual liberty. She's called a free woman. And Hagar, she's a description of bondage. She's the bondwoman. And in matters of salvation, it's good to seek to be freed from simplicity. Simplicity has been dignified by the lot and the people in the church. Make it simple. No. Well, here's a word from Solomon. The greater than Solomon has risen. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity and the scorners delight in the scorning and fools hate knowledge? We're talking about God and the things of God here. This isn't childish stuff. That's right. Away with simplicity. Amen. You've been given a capacity. You're made in the image of God. You've been given a capacity to understand what That's God right. says. Right. So don't be satisfied with simplicity. Now here's what the scripture says. that uh, Hagar, Paul said, she's Mount Sinai in Arabia. Now, would you have concluded that? Well, maybe after you had a lot of tenure, maybe you could have kind of seen it, but that's quite a statement. Hagar, she's Mount Sinai in Arabia. Yeah. And then she's also compared to the earthly city of Jerusalem, which was in bondage with her children. Sarah is the free woman who in turn is likened to Jerusalem, which is above, which is the mother of us all. So we are servants of God, but we're willing servants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're willing servants of God. Spiritual liberty, what a marvelous thing it is. Sarah's compared to the prophecy of a barren woman who had more children than the one who could give children to her husband. Yes. Do you know of any book on hermeneutics that would teach you to interpret the Bible this way? <laughs> yeah. that, but actually, what, what I was what I was thinking is that, that uh, again, S Sarah she she represents the work of God. That's right. And, uh -huh. and H Hagar is is what you do. That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what you do. See, the law the law is what you do. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Gospel is what. God does. Mm -hmm. Amen. So this, I like it. Again, Galatians 4, 25 to 31 starts out by, For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. <laughs> and I could just imagine how this, you'd be mad if you quoted this to the average church, with what kind of looks you did. What kind of looks you get. But this is true. Mount Sinai is compared to Jerusalem, which is in bondage. But Jerusalem, which is above, is the mother of us all. Those in Christ are like Isaac, they're children of the free woman. They're free, they're free to do what they should and what they want. See? Because your wanters change when you come into when you come into Christ. Hagar, she has to be governed by by law. She only does what she's got to do. See? There's people out there that are professed Christians that the only reason they do is because they have to do it. Yes. That's not reason enough. I admit, I admit that you do kind of start out that way, but you've got to learn that you're free in Christ. Yes. Yes. If Jesus says, do this, you're free to do it. Yes. Yes. But the only way you find out is to launch out and do it. Amen. As soon as you launch out and do it, then you'll get the resources and you'll get the thing done. Wonderful. She judged him faithful. Hebrews says she judged him faithful at promised. Well, the first time she heard the promise, 
She was 98. Is that right? 99? She was 99 when he was born, right? Yeah. 90. She was 89. The first time, the first time she heard she was gonna have the child was one the year before he was born. Remember, she laughed within herself. Somewhere between that laugh within herself and up until Isaac was born, she saw the picture. And she judged him faithful. Amen. See, so what it says. Yes. So the Genesis record doesn't identify when yeah. that happened, but it happened. Yeah. That's quite a blessing when you see <laughs> that the Lord didn't overlook Sarah. Yeah. He right. brought her into this with Abraham, yeah. and she was a part of this just as much, in a sense, just as much as Abraham, and because she was the one that was going to actually give the birth. It couldn't have been like like forced upon her. Yeah, that's right. She saw it. And, and that, that's quite a blessing because you, you may feel insignificant in the kingdom, but if you'll believe, God, God will include you into his. That's right. Yeah. You know, it says she judged him faithful, it promised. Amen. And, and some of the versions a great number of them, I thought I listed them here, but I, I can't put my finger on it, but they, they go to the New Revised End Version. They say Abraham is the one that judged God faithful, and he received strength. So the great number of the most all of the modern versions, that's what they say. But it's Sarah. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Abraham's faith is brought up a couple of verses later. Uh -huh. Yes. Then uh, Jacob and Esau. I want to touch on them. In in Paul's delineation of God's prerogative. He has a right to choose. Some people don't want him to give, have that right. They object. You don't want to object. If God says he chooses, you don't want to act like that's not possible. Amen. Or that God doesn't do it. If we didn't have any revelation on it, all right, we might allow for people to conjecture about it, but we have revelation on this. And Jacob is an example of election. Yeah, amen. This is something revealed. Uh -huh. this, is not a, this is not a conclusion I've reached. Right. Although I've reached it, but uh -huh. it's after I heard God's conclusion on the matter. Yeah. See, God's always went against the normal practice. Mm -hmm. He chose Isaac over Ishmael, even though Ishmael was the oldest. He chose Jacob over Esau, even though Esau was the oldest. He chose Joseph over all of his brothers when it came to firstborn rights. So the case of Jacob being chosen over Esau is especially, especially important. The scripture says this, not only this, but when, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by her father Isaac, so Jacob and Esau didn't have different parents. She bore, she bore twins as a result. And he chose Jacob, who was the second born when born. But according to birth order, he should have got the birthright, but God chose Jacob over Esau. But Paul tells us why. That the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elders will serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob, if I love it, Esau, if I hate it. That's why God did that. So you'd know. His purpose hinges on his choice, not man's choice. Yes. Is another way of teaching the doctrine of grace. That's right. It's by grace. That's right. If it's God's choice, it doesn't depend on you. Uh -huh. That means it's by grace. By grace. That's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Purpose of God according to election. Someone might say, well, wait a minute. Sometimes God made choices because of what people were going to do. Because I remember he said, shall I hide from Abraham the thing I'm going to do when he's going to destroy Sodom? He says, I know him. I know him. He'll command his children. But he didn't destroy Sodom because Abraham was going to teach his children. That's not what dictated what he was going to do. He revealed the thing to Abraham because of his faithfulness. 
And Paul said the same thing. He said, he said something that leads people to believe that he was the apostle because he could be trusted. Which that's what maybe what this sounds like. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.12, I thank God, Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. You see, there you are. The reason he put him in the ministry is because he considered him, he considered him faithful. But that was after he'd chosen, see, he chose Paul before he put him in the ministry. Yeah, you've, got, you've, got, right. <laughs> you've got to see that. Yeah. So he chose Paul, uh -huh. then he put him in the ministry because he could be trusted. He, was, he knew he was a good steward. Uh -huh. So once again, you see the necessity of the book of uh, Genesis. And one last uh, thing, the 12 tribes. They're mentioned only once. 12 tribes are only mentioned once when Jacob blessed his 12 sons, the 12 tribes. But they're referred to in Scripture, the 12 tribes. That you're introduced to them in Genesis. They are mentioned. Paul ref references the twelve tribes. Said to his, his, his disciples, "Ye shall ye that have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit upon the throne of His glory, ye shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel." And Luke 22.30 says the same thing. This reflects their basic ministry. Their basic ministry, not their exclusive ministry, their basic ministry was to the 12 tribes. Paul refers to the 12 tribes in his testimony to Agrippa. He mentions the 12 tribes. Now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto the fathers unto the which promise our 12 tribes. See, Mr. 12. James wrote to the 12 tribes that are scattered. James, a servant of God of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes. And then in the glory, the 12 tribes, they're mentioned. The, the holy city, which is the glorified church. Had a wall great and high, and twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and the names written over which over which are the names of the twelve tribes. Yes. The point of entrance. Yes. That's equivalent. See, that's the same thing as saying we were grafted into their tree. That's see, that's right. the same thing as, right. as saying that. See, so here you have in the Revelation, uh -huh. you got something you first heard about uh -huh. in Genesis. Isn't there something? Mm -hmm. And I give you. Uh, there's four, there's different lists of the 12 tribes and they're not all the same, but they all always are just 12. And there's reasons for the differences if you want to take the time to study the thing out. I trust that you've, uh, this hasn't been too scattered, that you've seen that sound doctrine presumes an understanding of the book of Genesis. Yes, amen. Knowing about sin, uh -huh. knowing about death, Knowing about marriage, mm -hmm. yes. knowing about the coming of the Lord. Yes. See, it right. presumes that you have a working knowledge of the Amen. of the book of Genesis, and uh, so our labors weren't in vain. Yes, but Jason. Tribes teaches us, and the whole book of Genesis teaches us that God's purpose is to create a peculiar people yes. <laughs> that, belo that belong to Him. All the way through Genesis, Amen. you see people Amen. that belong to God. Uh -huh. Seth and Abel and Noah and yeah. Abraham, all these people that belong to God. That's that's God's God's purpose is to gather out of the world a, from Jew and Gentile. Because the promise to Abraham that's included right. the Gentile. I have other sheep. Uh -huh. Yeah, a people for Himself. And what God has in store for this people is is beyond the comprehension of our mind. Yeah. See it, Amen. Amen. The body of the saved in the aggregate is not just a bunch of individuals. Uh -huh. yeah. It's a family. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. It's a, a temple. Mm -hmm. It's a house. Mm -hmm. So that when we talk about being saved, everyone fits together. It's that way. It's, God's making a generation, a 
a nation. We are a holy nation. Gee, that's what we are in Christ. Amen. Now, this is different than normal people think. They don't normally think. This is why some people don't like to, quote, go to church. They don't like to be involved. They don't think of themselves as part of a family uh -huh. yeah, right. or part of a body. Mm -hmm. See? They think of themselves as fundamentally individuals. Yeah. When they pray, they pray for this. This is what they pray for. Yeah. When they want something, this is what they are adjusting. There's a trend that's going on where the churches are dimming their lights and they're making the, the assemblies dark. And that's that's the reason right there. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It, it's this individual. You to be personal. Yeah. It's uh -huh. more personal. I think that's, I think that's more, It's more the, yeah. more the stage. Yeah, that's right. Spotlight in the stage. Uh -huh. yeah. That's right. That's a good point. It's, it's the spotlight is on... See, the spotlight really in the kingdom is on Jesus. This is not on a person. Yes, Sister Barb. You mentioned this several times going through the book of Genesis, but it's laying foundation. Yes. It's laying the foundation. The foundation is something that's strong that can support other things being built upon that. And all these examples that you were bringing out, they all teach us about God. Okay. He is the strength of this foundation that he has laid so that we can depend upon these things to uphold us then Amen. as we as we give ourselves to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I wanted to develop this thought, what I'm going to say here, but I'm not ready to develop it fully to my satisfaction. But God just couldn't tell us I am, uh -huh. yeah. just, yeah. just tell us about this. Uh -huh. Because sin had done such a work on us, we couldn't have taken it in. So he embodied these traits in his relationship with various people, he highlighted these aspects, and he couldn't just give you a doctrinal statement about it. He demonstrated it. See, he demonstrated it in these, in these chosen people, but I, I want to work on how to say that, but that's, I can see that's what he did. So, so a philosophical religion is fundamentally wrong. If you try, if you try and make religion speculative, so you're just kind of like a holy guessing all the time. This is not right. Yeah, amen. This is not right. Mm -hmm. Probing and... This is not right. God has revealed very, very particular things mm -hmm. in all of these associations in Genesis. And then you've got the rest of the scripture too. Yeah. He's revealed things you would not understand mm -hmm. satisfactorily yeah. yes. otherwise. Neither would principalities and powers in heavenly places. Right. They wouldn't see it. Either. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Yes, Brother Jason. Well, going back to that very first thing we talked about with Adam and Christ being the last yeah. Adam. This, mm -hmm. this tells us, see, Jesus is a different kind of man. That's right. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, he is a man. Yes. But we have to be careful how we say this. Amen. Because there are some people who think Jesus is only a man. Yeah, just uh -huh. a man. But see, he's a different kind of man. And this, this shows us that what God actually purposed to do is he's sharing his nature Amen. with Amen. us. Amen. Now, this... There's more to this than just, oh no, now I gotta go down there and fix the mess. There's more to it than yeah. that. Yeah. Jesus didn't just come into the world to quote unquote fix the mess. Mm -hmm. Now he did, he did come to die for our sins. Sin had to be taken out of the way, but that was in order to That's right. in yeah. order That's to right. that we might participate in the divine nature. Yeah. And Jesus, that's what it means when it says he's the he's a different order of humanity. Uh -huh. He's this union of God and man. Right. Yes. Remember when the disciples in the boat said, what, what kind of man is this? Yeah. Even the wind and waves obey. Uh -huh. yes, I, I think I said that this lesson, but Abraham's response, you had the response of the uh, people who heard Jesus, they said, marveled. Yeah. At his words, they marveled. Yeah. Then this, what, this, what manner of man is this? Yeah. And what he said, uh, beware the eleven of the Pharisees. Oh, boy. When he cursed the fig tree, whoa. But Abraham didn't react that way. Yeah, it, right. it, 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 Abraham didn't react that yes. way. <laughs> Amen. All right, we'll close there. But it, it's good to consider, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. All right, dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee for the book of Genesis, for the faithfulness of Moses, your servant, Moses. evermore lead us in perceiving your 
nature in these records and others. We know that you're greater than we have perceived to this point, but we, we want to see. Show me thy glory. We join, we join with Moses in this. Show us your glory, Father. Show us what you're like. And we'll accept it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.